good afternoon, and thanks to everyone. I know we were, I think, probably the last thing between you and cocktails, but I think we've got a very good, uh, a very good panel um, for this last session. So the, the title, I think, of, the, of this one is, is KYC for the Digital Age. Um, we're going to talk about KYC. We will talk, I think, about some broader issues in the financial crime compliance universe as well, because I think that it's all, um, as, as, as I think many of us appreciate, it's all part of one, uh, one client life cycle. Um, you know, clearly, if, for anyone involved in the industry, financial crime compliance continues to be you know, one of, if not the most prominent uh, r risks faced by, by the industry and probably continues to face uh, the highest level of, of scrutiny from regulators. Um, digital innovation and many of the things we've heard about this week you know, present, I feel, tremendous opportunity to transform not only KYC, but the broader financial crime compliance capability um, of, of the firms involved in, in, in providing financial services. You know, there's a number of concepts, um, certainly digital identity, which we've heard about, um, some of the mechanisms for sharing of information uh, between banks, within banks, uh, with government agencies and with law enforcement. Um, you know, increased use of analytics, more powerful analysis, uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, as a means to determine patterns and identify uh, potential financial crimes within, within data sets. Um, and then clearly this all happens not just in a static banking world, but it clearly against a broader transformation um, of the industry that we've, we've seen again demonstrated in many of the sessions this week. Um, both innovation within existing financial services providers with respect to channels, transfer of data, interaction with clients, but also with you know, new entrants, disruptors to the financial industry, different providers of financial services, um, cryptocurrencies, other things that are changing the dynamic of the financial services landscape. The same rules should apply to these, to these players. How, do, how does that work and how do we continue to, to uh, apply a framework um, as this evolution evolves? So these are some of the things we do want to cover uh, in the next hour. Um, Really want to kind of maybe open up, and I'm going to maybe come to Jay for this uh, this first one, if I may. Um, but I think you know, talk about where we think, what what are the game changers? Where where can innovation, not just in KYC, but in you know other parts of the life cycle, sanctions, um, fraud detection, wh wherever we want to play in the financial crime space, wh where can the innovation that we're seeing make the biggest difference? What are the game changers? Great. Well. I think the, the, the big game changer really is, is that the financial crime space is a $2.1 trillion mega problem and that for all the years that the regulators, law enforcement and the financial service industry has been trying to deal with that problem, it hasn't worked. So the, the opportunity really is to uh, more effectively, appropriately manage identity, data privacy, um, and a user-centric model for, um, for identity, but to also take advantage of what technology has given us, and that is, as you called it, game-changing. I call it you know, the game-changing technologies that allow us to go after the financial crime, and, and whether it's, think about it as KYC, um, uh, AML, CFT, uh, the technologies are, in fact, game changing. And I'll just give you, you know, just a couple quick examples. But you know, there, there are a lot of companies here that are part of this. And um, one is a company called Tiger that really can take unstructured documents that are part of this KYC AML processes and, and electronify that process, but then run analysis um, on those documents in a way that allows financial institutions and the regulators to look at at, at those documents. Um, the identity revolution really is, is one not just of blockchain, but quite frankly, changes in the biometric process um, that the identity world will be more one of multi-factor identity. Um, and, and that doesn't mean two, that means multiple factors of which biometrics will be 
added to device um, what you know, what you, what you have, but, but, but who you are. And the technology, the game changers that are happening in every day in biometrics, um, from voice uh, to facial recognition. Uh, we just looked at a company called iProve, for example, that can avoid the replay um, attacks on facial uh, uh, recognition. So those biometric technologies will change everything for, for all of us. Um, and then, of course, big data. And big data is probably you know, one of the most, think, think of the, the data lakes and the pools of data um, that are essential to fighting financial crime, um, onboarding and identifying customers, um, and then on a transactional basis or an ongoing basis, performing that, that, that KYC. Um, data comes in so many formats, and, and the best minds in the, in the fintech space are looking at um, that data in, in, in a variety of ways. So think video and voice data, unstructured, large-scale pools, data lakes, of voice uh, and, and, and video and the ability to look at that for anomalies. Um, importantly, though, is, is that when you take the, the data, whether it's location-based data, the, the way Carto, a, a, a company that takes advantage of location-based data and, and looks for the anomalies that are fraudulent and or uh, financial corruption, um, but it's the artificial intelligence now, the machine learning tools that you can send on search and destroy missions to essentially go into those, those data pools and learn from it. And, and a great example of that, again, as a game changer, is a company that's here uh, uh, called Scream, which has one of the largest behavioral databases in the world, um, and that will look at some 450,000 different behavioral data sets um, and look for bad behaviors, essentially, and allow um, artificial intelligence to then map into a bank's or um, any institution that has a set of clients and transactions against those bad behaviors, find the anomalies in them, um, and drill down very quickly into bad behaviors and bad individuals in the financial crime space. And to be able to, as the cybercrime world morphs with financial crime, to be able to do that in the dark web.